this off it. Oh, and yet I respect the hornet, you know. The horse fly, just scumbags. With a bit of luck, with that repellent, uh, I won't I won't get any bites this year. But you know what I mean? I want to be down with the kids, Daddy. I, I want to get, you know, fashionable. Um, so I've got some shorts too. Short sleeve shirts. Now the exposure of one's arms to a creature like the horse fly is fraught with peril. Um, they can land, bite and be off before you've even realised uh, if you're moderately distracted, which I usually am. This is a lovely place, this Stockton Heath. Um, female duck shanting at me. I think I've got a bag of duck food left. Anyway, I need to sort that out because uh, <laughs> when, when female ducks shout at you for food, you know, I think you've got to pay attention really. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is uh, Stockton Heath. Oh, we're on the approach. This might be Grappen Hall. Actually, this might be Grappen Hall. There's a few nice places, and it looks like a nice place to moor. Actually, I bet you don't get tons of silly-ass kids knocking about, making a nuisance of themselves here. I bet you this is okay. Beautiful countryside, by the way. When you look at the map, when you look ahead and you think, where might I moor? And I looked at this place, and you see rows and rows of houses and things on the map, and you think, where there's houses, there's gangs of kids, potentially. And I know now, from having passed through this place, that I would feel safe more in here. But the issue of a comfort break is rearing its ugly head. So I need to consider where my stop will be it will have to be fairly soon so Stockton Heath now coming into the center of Stockton Heath There's a boat now appeared ahead of me, and I think it's a wide beam, and he's going slowly. It could be two boats breasted side by side. It isn't a wide beam, it is two narrow boats breasted together. But I don't know what he's doing because he's sort of, he's manoeuvring around. So the guy up ahead, right? He's obviously going slowly. Don't know how much of this the camera will pick up. He's obviously going slowly. And this was a place I was gonna come here yesterday. And I'm sorry I didn't now, because th you're close to Warrington. And Warrington's worth a look. You know, it gets a bad press, I think, but it's definitely worth a look. And they're stocked in Heath, which is lovely. The guys just waved at me, and I've just waved back as if to say, look, there's no rush. So I can't stop at Thorn Marine because they've got their hire boat there. Oh, and they've got a hire boat there. Right, the guy's just waved me past, which is really decent of him. Thanks for that, mate. Well, they do it about a fucking mile and a half an hour. Have you got far to go? Not which. At least it's a bit quiet today. But anyway, cheers mate, thanks, that's very kind of you. But so anyway, this is Stockton Heath. And there are mooring spaces here, look. You could moor there, that would be absolutely fine. That would be absolutely fine there. Plenty of space, I'd easily fit in there. And you've got security of numbers as well. 
I mean there are houses, it's urban, but I feel like it's a well-to-do area. You might get a couple of noisy kids, but they won't be bad ones. So what I've got to do is I've got to figure out how to take a, t a, a, a toilet break on the move. Now, certain solutions immediately present themselves to the casual ponderer of this question. And the same solutions occur to me as well. So, and the answer is yes, that is what I will do. I just need to basically nip, in nip inside and find a suitable receptacle. It will take a few seconds. So here we are on the outskirts of Stockton Heath, the western outskirts. There's a row of moorings here. I say moorings, just a bank, obviously. No armco, no rings, nothing like that. But when I came here, on the outward journey, this was uh, full of boats. There were about six, six, seven boats in a line. Um, but it's a cracking place. If you don't like the busier moorings in the middle of Stockton Heath, if you don't fancy those, then this place is, uh, I would imagine, just up your street, down your street, maybe. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> uh, all that, sorry, all that performance, but there was a child on the bridge with the little girl with their mum and the mum was encouraging her to wave and uh, because as I say you know um, in stretches where there's not much boat traffic quiet parts of the year you know a passing boat becomes a bit of a tourist attraction that said though some of the blokes are not very wavy I've noticed I've passed about half a dozen blokes uh, this morning so far and uh, not been an awful lot of waving going on I used to have this thing of trying to extract a hello out of people at all costs <laughs> you know leaning out hello or something so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for a either a bridge hole or a wide section of canal that's deserted and then I'm going to make my move these are the comfort break and I will not discuss the procedure or you know certainly not the details as I'm sure none of my civilised viewers would, uh, would wish anyway what we've got here some kind of boating club oh now is this coming back to me I remember this it's one of those many little cruising clubs that they have on the bridge water it says moored boat please slow down do you know what right a lot of these moored boats probably tore past me at five miles an hour on Sunday I'm not in a mood to slow down for the very people who were probably racing past me a couple of days ago. See what, what the wind's doing. So you may have an opportunity 
was sort of a toilet break. If I can get the boat sat against the bank relatively still, I'll get a couple of minutes to make my move. I'm gonna have to look lively. Yeah, the bow's coming off. The bow's coming off the bank already. Okay. I'm gonna give it a quick go. Sorry. Nice. Mission accomplished. Done. And there's a boat now coming behind me. But that's okay. What it means is I uh, can't stop as I was going to to put the bow camera on. So let's try and get an idea what speed I'm doing. This is the, the other half decent phone that I use as a bow camera. Say so I'm seeing four, seeing three and a half, 3.3, 3.1, four, 3.8. The, the speeds just vary so wildly it is almost impossible to get what you might consider remotely sort of accurate but I'm seeing a lot of 3.8s in this so I think my guess would be we're doing about 3.7 uh, which I think is a fairly respectable sort of a speed as the crow flies 3.2 miles right so actually, it won't be much over an hour, maybe an hour 10, hour 15, till we get to Preston Brook. A chan they have chandlers, right, at most marinas, but quite often, I'm not being out of all the saying this, quite often they're just rubbish. It's, it's like, it's a, f a few more in pins and mallets, you know, there's sort of some bare essentials, maybe a couple of fenders, there'll be some, which is handy to have, better than nothing. But, you know, look, this was the place I suspected would sell pies. It's It's got definitely got food in there. Probably. Yeah, anyway, I'm not stopping. So I will, I will come back to the bridge water, definitely. I will be back. Not in the Arnold Schwarzenegger sense to slaughter everyone. Um, <laughs> unless they go past me too fast again. I don't know what this town's called. I'm going to have to find out because this is a lovely... This is just... I'm suffering from um, adjective deprivation today. I've suffered from it on the Langoffler. Everything was just lovely. I couldn't think of another word. Um, this is not lovely in the rural sense, you know, it's not that kind of where you can see mountains in the distance. But it is very nice. And I don't mean that in that kind of, um, what's it? Borat, you know. It's nice, it's nice. My wife is nice, it's very nice. I might give a little spray of this anti-fly, this fly repellent here, and the smell of it just might be enough. Oh God, it went in me flaming eye. What um, the mayflies do down here where the cabin door is, they form a little cloud, and I wasn't a fan of them doing that. It's not that I wanted to be all territorial, but... So I wheeled at the bat of death. But just millions more came back. It's like orcs in Lord of the Rings. Doesn't matter how many you kill with those mayflies. You know, more just appear. There we go. Cheers, mate!
this is it's an amazing place this this is an amazing place it's like it's rural but there's sub the semi-industrial there's office facilities some kind of educational facility or meeting facility back there but it's all it's all in the middle of fields and stuff just all sat there Morning. Good shot at the sign. There's like holes in the sign there. That's mad. Who would have shot? Anyway. So, I think. We are on the approaches towards Runcorn, which will be on the right side, somewhere up ahead. Just a lovely little stretch. I can have just a nice, nice is the new lovely. Yeah, do you know what? I think I'm going to do Mindland Chandlers, right? Let's look at times now. Like, this is where the mili military grade planning grain comes into uh, its own here. So, we are 0.8 miles away. So, at most, it's a mile. So, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, we'll be at the Chandlers, right? It is now time wise, it is 11.07. So, we'll be at the Chandlers by half 11 half past 11 right if we leave at 12 if we're in there for half an hour Prestonbrook tunnel is another half a mile right so Prestonbrook tunnel half a mile I will cover in uh, half a mile, three miles an hour, 12 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, oh god, it's not that hard is it, you'd, you'd literally think I was doing rocket science, um, and Preston Brook is open at half past the hour, right, so I get to the Chandlers at half 11, I spend half an hour in there, I leave, yeah, I leave at 12, obviously brew, cover break, whatever you need to do, and by 10 past 12, I'm down outside Preston Brook Tunnel, which opens 20 minutes later. Fair enough. Yeah, wrong corner is somewhere over in that direction. There's a railway line I can see because you can see the arches over there and a power station beyond it. It's just really nice. Yeah, so in this section, the Bridgewater is built on a, a gently sloping hillside, um, which obviously comes down from on high over yonder, slopes down very gently, and then down below it slopes down another maybe 50 feet or so to the plane down below do you know it's a funny thing every time I watch one of those trains speeding past it always brings out that thought of you know, those days when I was sat on those trains flying southwards towards London or, you know, more, more often Birmingham. But the scenery around would be the last thing on my mind, you know. You'd, you'd be looking at your laptop or looking at emails or something. Because when you're, when you're a child, you enjoy a rail journey for its own sake. Just... 
the fact of being on a train, rattling along, looking out of the windows, you know. But when you're an adult, and when it's a work trip, it's all just about getting there. And you'd be sat on there, whizzing through the countryside, but you wouldn't have much of a, a thought for the actual countryside you were in. It would all be about what was going to happen that day. Morning. Uh, Midland Chandlers is, I am right, it's just past the motorway bridge. So we are now approaching our stop for the big Chandlers. Excitement. Ah. I know this is going to sound pathetic. Like, how can a shop be that excited? But Chandlers aren't just ordinary shops. Right, it looks like the moorings are, are, are free. And that's great. I don't need any shenanigans, fingers crossed, to get myself in there. Yeah. Shortly before you leave the Bridgewater, you have this marvellous establishment, Midland Chandlers. There's space for one, maybe two boats to stop. So, to be honest, it's time for some retail therapy, boat style. Well, well, well. I just think you can't, you just can't miss it. You can't go past it. It's too good a chance. Hiya. Yeah. Number one. Try this. What are these things? Drive plate, oh my god. I don't want to get involved with anything like that. That's 15 quid, but it's a proper one. With the gearbox oil and stuff. Oil and filters. I think I've got all that covered. Amazon and eBay are tightening their rules about sending potentially hazardous chemicals. So stuff like this can no longer be sent. Sterling inverters. I had one of those. Load of shite. 